Do you need a 30-hour day just to keep up, let alone get ahead? Are all of your urgent tasks crowding out the important things in your life? And what can you do today to begin gaining control of your time God's way? And what can you do today? And what can you do today to begin gaining control of your time God's way? We'll be exploring answers to these important questions and more on this edition of Your Hope Today. Your Hope Today is a weekly radio broadcast bringing you practical advice from God's Word, the Bible. Our program is designed to inspire, inform, and uplift all people with the power of hope. Your Hope Today is on the air because we believe that real and reasonable hope is the foundation for all positive change. Hope is the bedrock of faith the backbone of accomplishment, and the architect of success. Let's discover the path to a life more abundant through the power of hope. The pace of life seems hectic for many of us. It feels like we're being pulled in so many directions that we don't have time to do the important things. This tyranny of the urgent assails all of us in this modern world. Learning God's principles for letting go and letting God are the topic for today. But before we begin, let's take a moment to pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you bless this broadcast today. Speak to us, give us rest and peace, and help us to take a few moments with you, even in the midst of this program. Lord, help us to learn to release our time to you through the discipline of spending time with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Taking time for anything personal can sometimes feel like you're stealing it from something else. I used to feel this way about exercising and prayer. I felt that I had so many priorities and responsibilities that I couldn't take time to exercise and that I could pray on the run with God and everything would be okay. Well, my body let me know that it wasn't okay to skip exercise and my spirit let me know that it wasn't okay to skip dedicated prayer time with the Lord. The results of either practice was flabbiness. The real issue in my way was where to put my time and attention. I had some good excuses. I have a family at home that needs my presence and full attention. I have important work to do which requires focus and creativity. I have responsibilities to others to be, do, or have whatever I have promised to them and to produce it on time and at the highest quality level possible and so forth. We have so many important things pulling on us. Some of them require our attention, and some of them we would like to give our attention to if only there were more time. Now, I dislike it when speakers or authors offer the guilt trip of time. It goes something like this. Maybe you've heard it. You have the same number of hours in the day as so-and-so. The speaker or author will then begin inserting the names of ancient and modern people who accomplished great things in the same amount of time each day that you have. This example annoys me because it denies the increasing complexity of life and brings achievement down to an overly simplified formula. Thomas Jefferson was a great person, but his life was far less complex than it is today. Now, our life is immeasurably easier than Jefferson's from the standpoint of convenience, but the level of complexity has grown probably a hundredfold since his day. The comparison simply isn't fair. The real telltale that perhaps this moniker no longer applies to us in the modern world is that the list of people rarely contains any truly modern examples but instead appeals to our sense of nostalgia and history by using examples that aren't quite so available for modern scrutiny. So, if our days really are more complex than the old adage allows, and our time really is getting away from us, how can we get it back under control and focus back on what is important in our lives? Well, the answer might surprise you. The answer is to take time to pray. Now, I'm not advocating any fancy time management tricks or accomplishment frameworks where you scrub the bathroom tiles while you're taking a shower. I'll be advocating a simple and practical approach to getting back our time and simultaneously getting all of the elements of our lives back in sync with God's will and God's purpose. Making time for prayer on a daily basis will transform your life and your relationship with God. But with so many demands upon our time, how can we possibly fit one more thing into our day? 
Now, the logic that will follow might seem counterintuitive, but it works. Why do we take time to exercise when we have so many responsibilities? Because the comparatively brief time we spend exercising has great benefits throughout the rest of our day and the rest of our lives. Why do we take time to prepare and eat healthier meals and snacks for ourselves and our families? Because the benefits outweigh any time savings we might gain by eating otherwise. The same is true of time spent in prayer. There is a simple and wonderful book on the importance of taking time for daily prayer called Too Busy Not to Pray by Bill Hybels. In the book, Bill explains the enormous demands on his time as the pastor of a large church and shares his struggles with staying afloat before he began to build the discipline of regular time in prayer. Here is a quote from his book on the importance of making time to pray each day. Some people tell me they don't need to schedule regular time for prayer. They pray on the run. These people are kidding themselves. Just try building a marriage on the run. You can't build a relationship that way with God or with another person. To get to know someone, you have to slow down and spend time together. And that is our goal. Not to rip through our to-do list, but to get to know each other. To build that spiritual relationship with God. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 14, God is speaking to the children of Israel, instructing them on how to prosper in the midst of their exile. Now, God concludes his instruction by saying, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. We will pray, and he will listen. We will seek him, and he will be found. And when we do these things, we will be restored. Don't we feel exiled sometimes? Exile to days and nights filled with toil to the point where we feel that we just don't have time to do the important things in life? Don't we feel bound to our responsibilities and to our families and the other necessities of life? Sometimes managing it all just seems like too much. I find it interesting in the scripture from Jeremiah that we always go first and God responds with faithfulness. It always grabs my attention because on the salvation end of the equation, God has done all the work. There's nothing we can add to the perfect work of Christ on our behalf. We can only accept what has been done for us. But when it comes to relationship, God is waiting for us. God says, you call on me, you pray, you seek, and I'll listen. I will allow myself to be found, and I will restore. Now, Jesus mirrors this in Matthew chapter 7. I'm I'm reading verses 7 through 14. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give what is good to those who ask him? In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life and there are few who find it. Here, Jesus mirrors the intent of Jeremiah's words and then expands upon the theme. The responsibility to ask, seek, and knock is ours to do first. But Jesus goes on to show us that treating others the way we wish to be treated is also our responsibility first. We have a lot to accomplish in our time with God. Although he certainly is willing to listen to our challenges, our goal then is to build a relationship with him to find him, to have things opened unto us, and to receive from him in relationship. But we get stuck. 
caught between our internal spiritual desire to do these things, to spend the time, build the relationship with God and other people, but it just seems so impractical with all the other priorities piling up. Many of us are already so pressed, and then we'll hear some advice about taking time for making healthier meals, or taking 30 minutes out of each day for exercise, or taking time each morning for prayer and an hour in the evenings for Bible study. In the midst of those shoulds, we still have to make sure that our responsibilities get met, and that the people that depend on us have what they need from us, both materially and in terms of time and attention. It can make us feel crazy. We know that in a life that looks this scrambled, something isn't going to get done. And we feel stressed out about our responsibilities to ourselves and to the people we care about. We feel torn between the need to do and the need to simply be. We let God slip by the wayside because... He has to understand how busy we really are. He knows our heart. He knows how hard we're working to make it all work. God has to understand that I don't have time right now to pray. I need to spend time with my kids. I've hardly seen them all week. God supports family and would want me to spend my time there. And the dance goes on. Our priorities rotate and shift based on what we feel is important at that moment the tyranny of the urgent. We understand intrinsically that our time doesn't belong to us to a large extent, and that the time we do have is often spent trying to catch up on the priorities that we've let slip because of the more pressing ones which came into our attention. I think about the quote from Bill Hybels, you can't build a marriage on the run, and you can't build a relationship with your family or God that way either. So we get stuck knowing that we're sacrificing the important things in life for the urgent things in life. But when the stakes are high and the consequences are real, how do we handle the obvious disconnect in our lives between the shoulds and the musts? Well, God has given us a simple mechanism for getting all of the important things done in our lives, and I'm going to share that with you. And I'll also be giving you a technique which you can use to bridge that gap between the shoulds and the musts in your life. Now, this simple exercise will allow you to refocus your priorities on a daily basis and refocus your relationship with God and the people you love and care about. I'd like to begin our discussion of getting a handle on our busyness with a quote from The Tyranny of the Urgent by Charles Hummel. Don't let the urgent take the place of the important in your life. Oh, the urgent will really fight, claw, and scream for attention. It will plead for our time and even make us think we've done the right thing by calming our nerves. But the tragedy of it all is this. While you and I were putting out the fires of the urgent, an everyday affair, the important thing was again left in a holding pattern. And interestingly, the important is neither noisy or demanding. Unlike the urgent, it patiently and quietly waits for us to realize its significance. Mr. Hummel makes a resounding point for us that the important things in life are neither noisy or demanding. They quietly wait for us to realize their significance. With this framework in mind, let's dig into what we can do about getting back our time. The first discipline to bring into our situation is prayer. I mentioned this earlier in the broadcast, but setting aside a time each day for building a relationship with God and understanding His will for your life and your day and even your next few hours is going to be of critical importance. For some of you, this may take some faith and some discipline to bring it about, but it will be worth it. And when I first started this practice, I barely had two minutes to scrape together, but over time, it's become easier and more profitable for me as time goes on. The goal of this time spent will be to strengthen your relationship with God, get guidance on the matters of the day, and to invite God into your situations and your day. I've discussed this at length in other broadcasts, but it bears repeating here today. God really is interested in you. God is interested in your grocery list, the crush of your debt, getting your kids to school on time, and that big presentation to the boss next week. God is interested in all of those things because they pertain to you personally. God is merely waiting to be invited into those situations and into your side of the situations. Whether in success or failure, having God in your situation with you is far better than going it alone. It may take you some time to become fully persuaded of the truth of this, but it's an exciting opportunity. So, we'll be setting aside some time each day, preferably in the morning, to spend time talking with God and listening for God's instructions for us and the impressions of our hearts through prayer. 
Now, if your response to this is like most people's, you're already thinking, what? Get up even earlier? I already get up at 6 and fall into bed at 11.30 every day. How can I get up any earlier? Or the flip side, perhaps. God understands how busy I am and why I just can't take time for that. Both reactions are perfectly normal. I remember when I first started doing this in college, I dragged myself up at 5 in the morning, open my Bible and my prayer journal, and wait, head bowed, eyes closed, and then I'd wake up an hour later with my head on the table. Well, all I can say is that it gets better and easier as the benefits of the time spent with the Lord become more real in your daily life. Now, don't get down on yourself for having this response, or even for failing to get up every morning. Just give it a try and seek to improve over time. So we're beginning to build our time daily with the Lord. It is time we spend building our relationship with God and growing in our understanding of who God is, what he thinks about us personally, and what God's will is and desires for us in life, in the day ahead and even in the next few hours of the day. Now this is just one way that we can begin to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Now for the second discipline. Each evening, take out two pieces of paper or use two sides of a notebook And on the one side, write your urgent tasks for the next day. And on the other side, write your important tasks for that day. Now, keep in mind that urgent and important are completely different. And our goal is to work towards spending more time in the important category with our time each day. But write them out side by side. I believe that you'll notice something with this practice. Your urgent tasks will far outstrip your important tasks on any given day. And your important tasks will begin to show some patterns. Now, these will be instructive for you as you move forward. In the urgent category will be the things that you just have to get done, the items in your life screaming for your attention. These will be that pressing project at work, the dinner engagement with that important contact, and arranging for the three-day training session in Atlanta. Then there will be the smaller tasks that are urgent but need to happen in a timely manner, such as responding to emails, voicemails, text messages, following up with people who you are depending on for things, and managing your professional relationships, whether you are working or not. The important things on your list will be those things that are constantly placed on hold while the urgent gets done because it yells the loudest. These will be things like taking time for prayer and study, spending time with your spouse, your kids, your friends finding some time to exercise regularly, doing something about preparing healthier meals at home, and so forth. Maybe your important task will include finally getting a start on writing that book, actually making some time to create something simply for the sake of doing it. Or maybe the important thing on your list will be making the time and investing the prayer to mend broken relationships and say what needs to be said while it still can be. Wherever you are in your life, you will know what those important tasks are that you've allowed the urgent things to crowd out of your life. So you're taking the time in the evening to create these two sheets for the very next day. Do this before going to bed each night because this will create some of the substance of your prayer time in the morning. This discipline is very powerful and I recommend it to anyone who has trouble sleeping because they can't shut off their mind. If you lay in bed feeling guilt about all that you've left undone, and you allow the urgent things in your world to encroach even on your sleep, then I believe that this simple practice will bring you better and more restful sleep than you may have gotten in a long time. Now, when you lay down at night, surrender your lists to the Lord and ask that he bless and multiply your sleep so that you can be effective the next day. Put your list away and don't be tempted to place it by your bedside so you can write down anything that comes to mind overnight. After a few days of this practice, you'll have cleared out all those undone tasks in your head, and you'll be able to see most, if not all, of your urgent and important things with relative clarity. Now, when morning comes, we'll put it all together. Get up early and take some time to pray. Seek God's presence in your time and spend some time in the Word. Then bring your list to God. Now, you don't need to necessarily go over each and every item on your list, but pray over the list in their entirety. The goal of your prayer time is to bring your urgent and important matters before the Lord and to understand which items God feels are important for you in that particular day. Now mark those items that stand out to you in prayer and make those items your top priority for the day, even if it sounds counterintuitive to you. Be sure to get items from both your urgent and your important lists. At the end of the day, as you prepare your list for the following day, cross off those top priorities that you got done 
and move the remaining task to the list for the next day. In your important list, refresh the task that you must repeat to gain benefit and then add those other special important things as they come up. As you grow and integrate this discipline into your life, something amazing and transformative can happen to you. The first thing that seems to happen is that our priorities begin to change a bit. It's not that the urgent things aren't still urgent, but instead it's that they are put into the perspective of the important things. Now this allows us to slow down a little bit and evaluate how we can spend our time and energy. When you're suffering under urgency, the words slow down can seem scary. But with the proper perspective, you'll be able to let some things from your urgent category go without the pangs of guilt that you might usually feel. The second thing that can happen is that your important things seem to become more important. There's something about looking at the goals and desires and dreams every day that makes them more real. We can't so easily shove them in the drawer and choose not to look at them. If they are truly important things, they'll persist. You may also find some of the things you thought were really important don't need quite so much priority. The third thing that can happen is that you will begin to gain some of God's perspective on both your urgent and important tasks. As you dive into this practice and bring your needs before God in prayer, allowing Him to be Lord over your circumstances, both urgent and important, you'll begin to see the things that God finds important for you in the midst. These changes might surprise you. Now, so far, we've only been talking about the practical benefits of picking up these particular disciplines into our lives. We haven't even begun to tap the spiritual benefits of bringing our things before God and submitting our daily activities to the grace, lordship, and leading of God. We are essentially inviting God into our daily circumstances and allowing him to guide and direct our days. What will begin to happen for us spiritually is that we will have a deeper understanding of the character and will of God in our lives, in the daily matters. Now, this is powerful and important because we tend to segregate God into a box and say that God has no place in business or the dealings of other people. Well, I would disagree. In fact, I know several very successful business people that would directly attribute their success to this very practice. When I began the broadcast, I was talking about the difficulty we all face in cramming one more thing into our day, even something good. And then I went right ahead and asked you to take time for something extra. Well, now we get down to the spiritual reason for the practice. On a practical level, we want to and even need to gain more control over our time on a daily basis to bring more power into accomplishing the important things in our lives. This is true of almost everyone who's listening. But spiritually, we can also gain. And what will happen to us as we gain a better perspective on our urgent and important tasks is that we will realize that we simply can't do it all and we'll never be able to do it all. We will eventually be faced with our own failure to meet all of the demands which have been placed upon us and which we place upon ourselves. Now, at first, you may fight the idea and feel inadequate or be inspired to work harder, longer, and smarter. But Parkinson's law tells us that work expands to fill the time allotted and our efficiencies simply create room for more urgencies. What I have found, and hopefully you will find it also, is a place where I can take some things from both of my lists, both my urgent and my important, and surrender them to God. I simply release them. I can't do them. I can't really accomplish them anyway. I can try to complete them, but it seems doomed. It seems too big, too long, too hard. I can surrender those to God. Now, you can't just start out here, though. You can't just start dropping things off your list and asking God to do them for you. No, you have to build the relationship, build the trust, build the understanding of God's character, his will, and begin to gain an understanding of what God thinks about you personally. Then you'll have the framework and the faith to truly lay things down. Without that foundation, your supposed surrender will eat away at you and you'll worry about all the things you turned over to the Lord that aren't getting done. Instead, when we can learn to let go and let God handle some of our unhandleables, we grow in faith and we begin to realize that God really can meet all of our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. This is the beginning of true time management, a life submitted to the will of God, a practical relationship with God that is functional on a daily basis and actually helps you to prioritize and deal with the modern world and all of its incessant urgencies, 
and finally growing to a place where we understand that it's okay to let some things go and simply give them over to God for his management. When you are living in the tyranny of the urgent, it sounds like the scariest thing in the world. But when you begin to grow in faith and in the knowledge of God's character, it will be the most natural thing ever. So begin today to invite God into your daily situations, into your urgent and important tasks. Make your list of both for the coming day. Make some time in the morning to lay them before the Lord and get His perspective and priorities for your day and grow in the knowledge of God. In the end, I think you'll find that God can handle far more than you give Him credit for, and you will have a much better handle on each day as it comes. Thank you for listening to Your Hope Today. It is our mission to inspire, inform, and uplift all people with the positive power of hope. If you would like to listen to other broadcasts of Your Hope Today, please visit us at yourhopetoday.com. Your Hope Today is almost entirely listener-supported. If you have been blessed or benefited by this radio ministry, please consider supporting Your Hope Today in three ways. Your prayers, your presence, and your donations. Please pray for the success of this program, the well-being of our staff, and God's providence in the lives of our listeners and those that need to listen. Please commit to listen regularly to this program. We believe that it is easier to maintain a hopeful outlook than it is to regain one. And finally, if you feel that this radio outreach has benefited you or others, please consider supporting Your Hope Today with a regular donation to keep this ministry on the air and help it to grow into the global outreach that we believe it can be. You can make your donation by visiting yourhopetoday.com and selecting Support YHT on the front page of the site. Thank you for listening. Please join us next week for another edition of Your Hope Today. Until then, may God bring you strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow.